Hi, today we're going to talk a little bit about what a single band wireless repeater or range extender is and how it works. And then we're going to actually install one of their best selling ones on Amazon, which is a TP-Link uh, TL-WA855RE and see what exactly is what. So let's begin. So let's say this is my house and this is my wireless router. Obviously, as you can see, the wireless network cannot cover my whole house. So what do you think I should do? There are in fact different solutions that I can use to somehow extend the range of my wireless network. And one of them is by using a wireless repeater or a wireless range extender, which we're going to simply call it a repeater. Now, one type of a repeater that we're going to talk about it today is kind of old, but it is still sold and used today. And it is actually the single band repeater. The name is the recipe. It only has one frequency band, one radio, which is the 2.4 gigahertz band. Basically, what's going to happen here is that the repeater is going to connect to the 2.4 gigahertz wireless network of the primary wireless router. And in order for that to happen successfully, it has to be inside the coverage area of the primary router and it cannot be outside of that. Then it is going to rebroadcast the primary router's wireless network to extend the range of it. And again, in order for that to happen successfully, it shouldn't be too close to the primary router either. Not too far, not too close. Also, as you probably have noticed, there is no need to run a cable between these two devices, which I believe is the biggest advantage of using a repeater. I mean, I can easily extend the range of my Wi-Fi without the trouble of running a cable. In fact, if there is a cable connecting these two devices, this is no longer a repeater. As far as the wireless network of the repeater, normally I should have the option to decide whether I want to give it the same name and password as the primary wireless router or maybe something different. And of course, each one has its own use case. As far as the wireless channels, um, each wireless router, access point or repeater can only use one channel for each radio at the same time. So what exactly does that mean? It actually means, for example, if the primary wireless router is broadcasting on channel 1 and the repeater which is single band is connected to that, it can only rebroadcast the wireless network on the same channel as the primary wireless router. It's not perfect, but unfortunately that's how it is. Now, just combine that with the half duplex nature of wireless communication, which means only one device can transmit at a time. For example, this client is connected to this wireless router. It cannot send and receive at the same time. It can send and then receive, just the same way we talk on a walkie talkie. Now if we move the client and connect it to the repeater, all of its transmissions must be sent twice now. Why? Because once from the client to the repeater and once from the repeater to the wireless router. This will actually decrease the speed by at least 50% and increase the latency as well. All of that plus the fact that the 2.4 GHz wireless network itself is usually not very fast and reliable, especially in the crowded environments like the cities where there are many of them nearby. It actually tells me that I shouldn't necessarily expect a super fast and reliable connection here. Therefore, I shouldn't use it for that purpose. I guess based on what I just said, um, I better not use this for the clients that um, need to transfer huge files or uh, stream high quality videos, maybe 4K videos or even play online games. All right, I won't. Now let's open the box and see what's inside. But before we do that, just quickly wanted to say that uh, if you're enjoying the videos on this channel, I would really appreciate it if you go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already and also activate that bell notification because exciting videos are on the way and this way you get notified as soon as they're ready. Thank you very much and now let's open the box. Well, as you can see inside we have some paperwork and the repeater itself, that's it. The repeater with its two external antennas looks rather interesting.
There is a WPS button, a signal LED light, and a power LED light here. A 100 megabits per second Ethernet port and a reset button here. Now let's set it up and connect it to the wireless router. First off, I'm gonna plug it in into a power outlet which is close to my wireless router. Also, I should point out that the primary wireless router doesn't have to be TP-Link. It can be actually any other brand and as long as it has a 2.4 GHz wireless network, it should work fine. There are three different methods that I can use to set up the repeater and connect it to the wireless router. Number one, which is the easiest, is actually by using WPS. Basically first I press the WPS button on the router and then within 2 minutes I also press the WPS button on the repeater. Now the signal LED light should change from blinking to solid showing me that it is successfully connected. This way the repeater's Wi-Fi name would be the primary router's Wi-Fi name plus underscore EXT at the end. The password is going to be exactly the same though. Now I can relocate the repeater and put it in the right place. Method number two is by using a mobile device and also the TP-Link Tether app. Method number three is by using a computer and a browser, which is actually what I personally prefer and I'm going to show this method as well. So the repeater is plugged in close to my wireless router. Now on my laptop, I'm going to connect to the repeater's default wireless network, which is TP-Link Extender. Now I can open a browser and type in the default IP address of the repeater. After choosing a password for the repeater's user interface, I'm going to find the wireless network of the wireless router here and then enter its password so the repeater can actually connect to it. Next, I will choose a name for the repeater's wireless network and unlike in method 1, I can actually change it from the default one to something else, which I'm going to do it. But as far as the password, unfortunately I cannot change it and it automatically copies the wireless router's password. Okay, so I'm pretty much done at this point. Uh, I just need to relocate the repeater and put it in its right place. It is now broadcasting the new SSID, new wireless network, and I'm gonna connect to it. I just need to keep in mind that it is very much likely that the repeater has now received a new IP address from the wireless router, especially if they're on different subnets, which in my case they are, and this is the new IP address. So in order to log into the user interface of the repeater, I should use the new IP address, and if I don't know what it is, I can use this URL as well. One of the first things I would do when I log into the repeater, of course after making sure the internet is connected, also the repeater is connected to the wireless router with no problem, is to give a static IP address to the repeater. This way the IP address is not going to change from time to time and I know exactly what it is. For example, I'm going to give it this IP address. So the repeater is installed and I've been using it for a, a couple of days now. But just a few points that I haven't talked about yet. Number one, the 100 megabits per second Ethernet port, which I can use it to connect a wired client, maybe a desktop computer to the network, which is good. But I can also use it to connect a repeater with an Ethernet cable to the wireless router. And if you remember, in that case, this is no longer a repeater. And in fact, it is an access point. So that basically means I can change its operation mode and use it as an access point too, which is good. Number two, uh, the repeater also has a DHCP server, which can provide IP addresses for the clients. But it doesn't make any sense to enable it because my wireless router already has a DHCP server and it's been working fine. And I don't want two DHCP servers in my network. Number three, and there is actually an option to change the coverage level of the repeater, which I guess is changing the transmit power, which is good to know and might come in handy one day. 
I also did a little bit of testing, uh, nothing too crazy. I actually compared the speed and signal strength of the TP-Link repeater with an Asus AC68U in repeater mode and while connected to the primary router using the 2.4 GHz network, also rebroadcasting the 2.4 GHz network. And if you follow my channel, you probably know how much I actually like this very Asus wireless router. So it's going to be interesting. But just keep in mind that the results are going to be based on my environment here. And it doesn't mean that everybody should get the same numbers. I'm actually going to use iPerf to test the speed between two laptops, one connected with a cable to the primary router and one connected to the wireless network of the repeater. Then I'm going to repeat the test while both laptops are connected using Ethernet cables iperf is actually a very good tool for measuring the performance of the network i actually have a whole video on that and i'll put the link to that video here also in the video description and feel free to check it out if you're interested and here is actually what i got So as you can see, I got more or less the same results for both of them. Around 30 megabits per second when one of the laptops was connected wirelessly and around 90 megabits per second when both of them were connected with cables. I also checked the RSSI of both of them in three different places of my house. Well, as you can see, the RSSI was a little stronger for the ASUS in every single place. Not too much though. Alright, so I guess that was it. But just to summarize, um, I can say that the TP-Link repeater was actually very easy to set up. It actually worked fine in my first attempt to connect it to my uh, wireless router. Sometimes when you're connecting a repeater, it might not work in the first attempt. Then you have to try a couple of times, maybe unplug it, plug it back in, do a factory reset. But not with this guy. I actually didn't have any of those problems. In fact, it actually never got disconnected in the past few days, which is really good. Now, as far as the coverage area, I would say it has a good and acceptable range. Yes, it might not be as good as this guy, but still it gets a thumbs up from me. But you know, after all, this is a single band wireless repeater with all its limitations. So I wouldn't look at it as a solution uh, to extend the Wi-Fi range, maybe for a 4K or 8K TV, which is going to be streaming a lot of videos. Or maybe somebody who plays online games or uploads and downloads files a lot. But it might be a good solution for uh, a computer that is used for light web browsing or maybe a wireless printer and things like that. I just wish I could change the Wi-Fi password on the repeater. That is actually something that might be useful sometimes. And I'm not too worried about the Ethernet port which is only 100 megabits per second and not uh, 1 gigabits per second. Because uh, as we saw, uh, I could only achieve maximum 90 megabits per second on the wireless side. So probably 100 megabits per second Ethernet port should be enough. So as far as the price, it is about $20 on Amazon, link below in case you want to check it out. But fun fact, it is actually the second best selling repeater on Amazon right now. But for about $10 extra, I can actually buy a dual band TP-Link repeater. So is that extra $10 worth it? That is actually something that we're going to find out in the next video. And if by the time you're watching this, that video is ready, the link is going to be there. Otherwise, another video is going to be there. But until then, thank you very much for watching this video. Thumbs up if you liked it and share it if you think others might like it too. And subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Also, my Patreon link is there in case you want to support my channel. Thank you very much and I will see you next time.